подонки нацистские. Nazi scumbags, he said. Indeed, Russian supporters of Vladimir Putin are going crazy. German defense minister Pistorius will go down in history as an imbecile that Germany has become a zone of direct destruction. As the headline says, Putin's allies call for Berlin to be nuked all because of this. Germany confirming just minutes ago it will send advanced main battle tanks to Ukraine. Germany will also provide logistics, ammunition and maintenance to uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. The German government says the goal is to quickly establish two battalions with Leopard 2 tanks for Ukraine. Initially, it will provide a company of 14 Leopard 2 A6 tanks from its military stocks. And what about the United States? President Biden, who's speaking at the White House, expected to make that announcement formal. Today, I'm announcing that the United States will be sending 31 Abram tanks to Ukraine, the equivalent of one Ukrainian battalion. Secretary Austin has recommended this step because it will enhance the Ukraine's capacity to defend its territory and achieve its strategic objectives. The Abrams tanks are the most capable tanks in the world. <clears throat> They're also extremely complex to operate and maintain. So we're also giving Ukraine the parts and equipment necessary to effectively sustain these tanks on the battlefield. The decision by the Biden administration and Germany's chancellor ends months of debate and paves the way for a major shift in the balance of power on the Ukrainian battlefield. But there is a catch. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. The Biden announcement came close to midnight Russian time, so there was no opportunity for immediate Russian media calls to nuke the United States. However, the Russian rhetoric and threats to the United States will likely be more measured and restrained than the Russian bombast towards Germany. And here's why. For weeks, German leaders refused to send their Leopard tanks to Ukraine unless the United States contributed the M1 Abrams. The U.S. Defense Department argued that the Abrams tanks are too complex for transfer and use by the Ukrainians. So as the Washington Post reports, the debate was eventually resolved with a compromise. The U.S. tanks to be purchased from manufacturers rather than transferred from existing American military stockpiles will not arrive for months, if not years. Administration officials have emphasized the M1s are part of long-range planning for Ukraine's armed forces rather than weapons that will be put to immediate use. The plan is to transfer the Leopards currently spread across Europe in time for Ukraine to defend against an anticipated Russian offensive in the spring and to launch its own counteroffensive. Germany's Minister of Defense said it aims for the tanks to be on the battlefield by the end of March. That leaves a tight window for logistics and training, which is expected to begin soon. Now, will Russian leaders see a distinction between the immediate deployment of German tanks versus a U.S. deployment that could take years? In the eyes of many Russians, this is still a significant NATO escalation, regardless of the particulars. So there's some expectation in the Biden administration that Russian verbal threats and talk of nuclear strikes may continue. Plus, some of the supporters of Vladimir Putin have already warned that if Russia is ever on the brink of defeat in Ukraine, Putin or a possible successor, if he is deposed, could fire some of Russia's nuclear weapons at Ukraine, and perhaps at other nations. But in the meantime, Biden administration officials seem more concerned about helping Ukraine ward off an expected Russian spring offensive and enabling Ukrainian forces to regain more territory. Military experts say the tanks will make a significant battlefield difference, something that Russian media pundits with their wild nuclear rhetoric all seem to understand. Thanks for joining us.